Hey, this is Tony here with Salt Strong, and in this video, I want to give you some tips on how to rig the Z Man Razor Shads. I'll also be showing you some underwater footage and also talk about a couple things that I like and what I don't like about these lures. Now, when you purchase these lures, they come in a four pack. They also have multiple different types of colors out there. But as far as what the lure looks like, this is it right here. It's got a very, uh, very wide, very thick body, and then it has a segmented tail. As you can see there, there are segments in the tail which help give it a little bit more action. And then it has a split tail on the bottom. However, the split in the middle of the tail has a little bit of some plastic in there, so it gives it a lot of kick when you are twitching it through the water, unlike a jerk, uh, jerk bait style lure, which has just the two uh, kind of strings coming off of both ends that kind of form the tail. This one actually has that little piece of rubber or plastic in the middle that acts almost like a webbing, so it gives it a little bit more kick. Now, as far as the durability, just like with all the other Z-Man products, it's made out of that Elastec material, so you can really stretch this thing pretty good, and it'll snap back to its original shape. And if you have pinfish pecking at it, pulling at it, or snapper pulling at it, they won't tear it up. But then again, you have those puffer fish that can pretty much eat through anything, and they can tear it up because they have those razor sharp teeth. Now to talk about the action of this lure, it has a really good action, very similar to that of a jerkbait style lure, such as the Z-Man jerk shads, or the gulp jerk shad, or any type of soft plastic jerkbait style lure. Now it does have a nice controlled descent when it does fall down to the bottom. And what I really like is that when it hits the bottom, it just sits there nice and upright because these Z-Man products have that uh, naturally buoyant material. So if you use a weighted hook, the weight on the hook will help keep the lure down, but naturally the body of the lure want, will want to float. So it will sit nice and upright when it does hit the bottom. And that could be very appealing to fish when a lure sits upright in that natural position, kind of just sitting there on the bottom. And then when you go to twitch it and then pause again, that's usually when you get that strike. Now moving on to how I like to rig these up. When I first looked at these in the packaging on the shelf, they right away, they looked very bulky, looked very difficult to rig unless you use a jig head on there, which you can do, but I like to keep my baits nice and weedless because I'm usually working around structure or grass and all that kind of stuff that you can get hung up on. So what I found that works really well with these are the owner twist lock hooks, but in the four aught size and a one eighth ounce. That weight and size seems to work perfectly with these because that 1 8 ounce, it's not too heavy, it's not too light, and it allows that lure to sink nice and slow so it doesn't spook the fish. If you have something that you cast out and it hits the water, it makes a big splash, and it starts sinking really fast, sometimes it will spook those fish. But also sometimes it might trigger an instinctive reaction strike from those fish as something's moving really fast. But I like to keep it slow, especially with redfish, so I like to use these hooks. And I'm gonna show you really quick how simple it is to rig them up. A lot of people seem to have trouble rigging up Z-Man lures just because of that very soft, stretchy material. Makes it really hard to insert a spring such as these. However, these owner hooks, they have that centering spring on there. So what I like to do is first, turn the hook upside down and use the point of the hook to create sort of like a pilot hole. That gets a hole started in the head of the lure so that you can get that centering spring into the lure like so. Once you have it there, push the lure all the way up onto the spring. It's very stretchy so it will push up onto the spring and just pinch it there with your thumb and pointer finger. From there, you're just going to start spinning the hook as you're keeping that lure pinched on the spring and just spin it about four or five times, let go, see where your lure's at, and you can see it's up there on the spring. And then you're just gonna take the hook and push it through the bottom of the body, up through the top, and there you go. It's rigged nice and weedless. You have a weight on there so it sinks and you get a good, nice long cast with it. And also the body of these lures does have a slot on the top so you don't really have to skin hook the hook to keep it weedless. The hook will just rest in that little slot and you'll be good to go. 
So again, a 1 8 ounce 4 aught owner twist lock hook and that centering spring on these hooks definitely makes it a lot easier to rig them up because if you just have a regular spring, it's really hard to get that spring started on a certain part of the lure. But with that centering spring, it helps keep that spring in place so that you can twist it on and get that lure successfully put on that hook. Now one last tip when storing these razor shads, I highly recommend keeping them in the packaging and putting them back in the original packaging after you're done with them. That'll just extend the life a bit because they will react with each other. If they're touching each other inside your tackle box and it gets hot out, they will melt together. And also they'll melt onto other types of soft plastics and hard baits. So just make sure you keep them in the original packaging just to make them last a lot longer and you don't have to worry about them melting onto other plastics. Now, as with many of these other lure reviews, the biggest question that I get asked is, do these lures catch fish? And the answer is yes. However, what's most important is putting yourself in the right place at the right time under the right conditions. Because if you're in a spot and there's no feeding fish, you can throw live bait, you can throw dead bait, you can throw artificial bait, and you probably won't catch anything. But if you're somewhere where the fish are active, the fish are feeding, you're in the right spot at the right time, there's a good chance they'll hit anything you throw at them. So if you need help mastering these trends, definitely take a look at our Salt Strong Fishing Club at saltstrongclub.com. Also, if you have any questions or comments about these lures, or if you have any experience using them, definitely leave a comment down below. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Looking back, I was eight years old, out on the dock with my own zip code, catching them fish till morning.